Ani Di Franco. Angela Maria Ani Di Franco, born September 23, 1970, is an American singer, musician, poet, songwriter, and activist. She has released more than 20 albums. Di Franco has received positive feedback from critics for much of her career. Di Franco's music has been classified as folk rock and alternative rock, although it has additional influences from punk, funk. Hip Hop and Jazz. She has released all her albums on her own record label, Righteous Babe, giving her significant creative freedom. DeFranco supports many social and political movements by performing benefit concerts, appearing on benefit albums, and speaking at rallies. Through the Righteous Babe Foundation, DeFranco has backed grassroots cultural and political organizations supporting causes including abortion rights and visibility. She counts American folk singer and songwriter Pete Seeger among her mentors. DeFranco was born in Buffalo, New York, the daughter of Elizabeth, Ross, and Dante Americo DeFranco, died 2004, who had met while attending MIT. Her father was of Italian descent, and her mother was from Montreal. DeFranco started playing Beatles covers at local bars and busking with her guitar teacher, Michael Meltram, at the age of nine. By 14 she was writing her own songs. She played them at bars and coffee houses throughout her teens. De Franco graduated from the Buffalo Academy for Visual and Performing Arts High School at 16 and began attending classes at Buffalo State College. She was living by herself, having moved out of her mother's apartment after she became an emancipated minor when she was 15. De Franco started her own record company, Righteous Babe Records, in 1989 at age 19. She released her self titled debut album in the winter of 1990 shortly after relocating to New York City. There, she took poetry classes at the New School, where she met poet Seku Sundiata, who was to become a friend and mentor. She toured steadily for the next 15 years, pausing only to record albums. Appearances at Canadian folk festivals and increasingly larger venues in the U.S. reflected her increasing popularity on the North American folk and roots scene. Throughout the early and mid-1990s DeFranco toured solo and also as a duo with Canadian drummer Andy Stachansky. In September 1995, DeFranco participated in a concert at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio, inaugurating the opening of the Woody Guthrie Archive S in New York City. She later released a CD on Righteous Babe of the concert entitled Till We Outnumber M featuring artists such as DeFranco, Billy Bragg, Rambling Jack Elliott, Arlo Guthrie, Indigo Girls. Dave Perner, Tim Robbins, and Bruce Springsteen with 100% of proceeds going to the Woody Guthrie Foundation and Archives and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum Educational Department. In 1996, bassist Sarah Lee joined the touring group, whose live rapport is showcased on the 1997 album Living in Clip. DeFranco would later release Lee's solo album Make It Beautiful on Righteous Babe. In 1998, Stachansky left to pursue a solo career as a singer-songwriter. A new touring ensemble consisting of Jason Mercer on bass, Julie Wolf on keyboards, and Darren Hahn on drums, augmented at times by a horn section, accompanied DeFranco on tour between 1998 and 2002. The 1990s were a period of heightened exposure for DeFranco, as she continued playing ever larger venues around the world and attracted international attention off the press, including cover stories and spin. Ms. and Magnet, among others, as well as appearances on MTV and VH1. Her playfully ironic cover of the Bacharach slash David song Wishin' and Hopin appeared under the opening titles of the film My Best Friend's Wedding. She guest starred on a 1998 episode of the Fox sitcom King of the Hill, as the voice of Peggy's feminist guitar teacher, Emily. Beginning in 1999, Righteous Babe Records began releasing albums by other artists, including Sarah Lee, Sekhu Sundiata, Michael Meldrum, Ardo Lindsay, Bitch, and Animal, That One Guy, Utah Phillips, Hamill on Trial, Andrew Bird, Kurt Swinghammer, Buddy Wakefield, and Ice Mitchell, and Nona Hendricks. On September 11, 2001, DeFranco was in Manhattan and later penned the poem Self Evident about the experience. The poem was featured in the book It's a Free Country Personal Freedom in America after September 11. The poem's title also became the name of DeFranca's first book of poetry released exclusively in Italy by Minimum Facts. It was later also featured in Verses, a book of her poetry published in the U.S. by Seven Stories Press. DeFranco has written and performed many spoken word pieces throughout her career and was showcased as a poet on the HBO series Deaf Poetry in 2005. Since her 2005 release Knuckle Down, co-produced by Joe Henry, 
DeFranco's touring band and recordings have featured bass player Todd Sikafus and in turns other musicians such as Allison Miller, Andy Borger, Herlin Riley, and Terence Higgins on drums and Mike Dillon on percussion and vibes. On September 11, 2007, she released the first retrospective of her career, a two-disc compilation entitled Canon and simultaneously a retrospective collection of poetry book verses. On September 30, 2008, she released Red Letter Year. In 2090 Franco appeared at Pete Seeger's 90th birthday celebration at Madison Square Garden, debuting her revamped version of the 1930s labor anthem Which Side Are You On? In a duet with Bruce Coburn and also duetting with Chris Christopherson on the folk classic There's a Hole in the Bucket. DeFranco released an album on January 17, 2012, titled Which Side Are You On? It includes collaborations with Pete Seeger, Ivan Neville, Cyril Neville, Skerrick, Adam Levy, Righteous Babe recording artist Anna East Mitchell, C.C. Edcock, and a host of New Orleans-based horn players known for their work in such outfits as Galactic, Bonarama, and Rebirth Brass Band. DeFranco came out as bisexual in her 20s, and has written songs about love and sex with women and men. She addressed the controversy about her sexuality in the song in or out on the album Imperfectly, 1992. In 1998, she married her sound engineer Andrew Gilchrist in the Unitarian Universalist service in Canada. DeFranco and Gilchrist divorced in 2003. DeFranco's father died in the summer of 2004. In July 2005, DeFranco developed tendonitis and took a nine-month hiatus from touring. On January 20, 2007, DeFranco gave birth to her first child, Petolusha DeFranco Napolitano, at her Buffalo home. She married the child's father, Mike Napolitano, also her regular producer, in 2009. In an interview on September 13, 2012, DeFranco mentioned that she was pregnant and on April 6, 2013 she gave birth to her second child, son Dante DeFranco Napolitano. DeFranco has resided in the Bywater, New Orleans neighborhood since 2008. DeFranco has described herself as an atheist. On the subject of religion, DeFranco has stated, DeFranco has been a critical success for much of her career, with a career album average of 72 on Metacritic. Living in Clip, DeFranco's 1998 Double Live album, is the only one to achieve gold record status to date. DeFranco was praised by the Buffalo News in 2006 as Buffalo's leading lady of rock music. Starting in 2003, DeFranco was nominated four consecutive times for Best Recording Package at the Grammy Awards, winning in 2004 for Evolve. On July 21, 2006, DeFranco received the Woman of Courage Award at the National Organization for Women, NOW, Conference and Young Feminist Summit in Albany, New York. DeFranco was one of the first musicians to receive the award, given each year to a woman who has set herself apart by her contributions to the feminist movement. In 2009, DeFranco became a Woody Guthrie Award recipient, as a voice of positive social change. DeFranco's guitar playing is often characterized by a signature staccato style, rapid finger picking, and many alternate tunings. She delivers many of her lines in a speaking style notable for its rhythmic variation. Her lyrics, which often include alliteration, metaphor, wordplay, and a more or less gentle irony, have also received praise for their sophistication. Although DeFranco's music has been classified as both folk rock and alternative rock, she has reached across genres since her earliest albums incorporating first punk, then funk, hip-hop, and jazz influences. While primarily an acoustic guitarist she has used a variety of instruments and styles, brass instrumentation was prevalent in 1998's Little Plastic Castle, a simple walking bass in her 1997 cover of Hal David and Burt Bacharach's Wishin' and Hope and Strings on the 1997 live album Living in Clip and 2004's Knuckle Down and electronics and synthesizers in 1999's To the Teeth and 2006's Reprieve. DeFranco has stated that folk music is not an acoustic guitar, that's not where the heart of it is. I use the word folk in reference to punk music and rap music. It's an attitude, it's an awareness of one's heritage, and it's a community. It's subcorporate music that gives voice to different communities and their struggle against authority. DeFranco has collaborated with a wide range of artists. In 1997 she appeared on Canadian songwriter Bruce Coburn's Charity of Night album. In 1998 she produced fellow folk singer Dan Byrne's album 50 Eggs. She developed a deep association with folk singer and social activist Utah Phillips throughout the mid-1990s. 
sharing her stage and her audience with the older musician until his death in 2008 and resulting in two collaborative albums, The Past Didn't Go Anywhere, 1996, and Fellow Workers, 1999, with liner notes by Howard Zinn. The Past is built around Phillips's storytelling, an important part of his art that had not previously been documented on recordings, on the album, DeFranco provides musical settings for his speaking voice. The follow-up, Fellow Workers, was recorded live in Daniel Lanois' Kingsway Studio in New Orleans and features Phillips fronting DeFranco's touring band for a collection of songs and stories. Prince recorded two songs with DeFranco in 1999, Providence on her To The Teeth album, and I Love You, But I Don't Trust You Anymore on Prince's Rave on To The Joy Fantastic album. Funk and soul jazz musician Masia Parker and rapper Corey Parker have both appeared on DeFranco's albums and featured appearances by her on theirs. Parker and DeFranco toured together in 1999. She has appeared on several compilations of the songs of Pete Seeger and frequented his Hudson Clearwater Revival Festival. In 2001, she appeared on Brazilian artist Lenini's album Falong Hey Canibal. In 2002, her rendition of Greg Brown's The Poet Game appeared on Going Driftless, an artist's tribute to Greg Brown. Also in 2002, she recorded a duet with Jackie Chan of the Irving Gordon song Unforgettable for a record of unlikely collaborations entitled When Pigs Fly, Songs You Never Thought You'd Hear. In 2005, she appeared on Dar Williams' Record My Better Self, duetting on Williams' cover of Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb. She performed with Cindy Lauper on Sisters of Avalon, a track from Lauper's 2005 The Body Acoustic album. In 2006 she produced Hamill on Trial's album Songs for Parents Who Enjoy Drugs. In 2008 she appeared on Todd Sikafus's album Tiny Resistors. In 2010 she co-produced a track with Margaret Cha called Captain Campbell Toe for the comedian's Cho Dependent album. In 2011 she appeared on Rob Wasserman's album Note of Hope, an exploration of the writings of Woody Guthrie with musical accompaniment, though the track in which she appeared, Voice, was actually recorded 13 years earlier. Also in 2011 she duetted with Greg Dully on the Twilight Singers record Dynamite Steps. Other artists have covered and sampled De Franco's work throughout the years. Her spoken word poem Self-Evident was covered by Public Enemy founder Chuck D's group called Impossibles. Alana Davis had some commercial success with De Franco's song 32 Flavors. Samples from the track coming up were used by DJ Spooky in his album Live Without Dead Time, produced for Adbusters magazine in 2003. In 2010, DeFranco played Persephone on Anna East Mitchell's album Hades Town. Although much of DeFranco's material is autobiographical, it is often also strongly political. Many of her songs are concerned with contemporary social issues such as racism, sexism, sexual abuse, homophobia, reproductive rights, poverty, and war. In 2008, she donated a song to Aid Still Required CD to assist with the restoration of the devastation done to Southeast Asia from the 2004 tsunami. The combination of personal and political is partially responsible for DeFranco's early popularity among politically active college students, particularly those of the left wing, some of whom set up fan pages on the web to document DeFranco's career as early as 1994. DeFranco's rapid rise in popularity in the mid 1990s was fueled mostly by personal contact and word of mouth rather than mainstream media. Ani cites her anti corporate ethos for the main reason she decided to start her own label. This has allowed her a considerable degree of creative freedom over the years, including, for example, providing all instrumentals and vocals and recording the album herself at her home on an analog 8-track reel-to-reel, and handling much of the artwork and packaging design for her 2004 album Educated Guess. She has referenced this independence from major labels and song more than once, including The Million You Never Made, Not a Pretty Girl, which discusses the act of turning down a lucrative contract, The Next Big Thing, Not So Soft, which describes an imagined meeting with a label headhunter who evaluates the singer based on her looks and Napoleon, Dilate, which sympathizes sarcastically with an unnamed friend who did sign with the label. The business grew organically starting in 1990 with the first cassette tape. Connections were made when women in colleges started duplicating and sharing tapes. Offers to play at colleges started coming in and her popularity grew largely by word of mouth and through women's groups or organizations. Zango and Goldenrod, two music distributors specializing in women's music, started carrying DeFranco's music. In general they sold music to independent music stores and women's bookstores. In 1995 Righteous Babe Records signed with Koch International for DeFranco's release of Not a Pretty Girl. 
Her records could then be found in large and small record stores alike. DeFranco has occasionally joined with Prince in discussing publicly the problems associated with major record companies. Righteous Babe Records employs a number of people in her hometown of Buffalo. In a 1997 open letter to Ms. Magazine she expressed displeasure that what she considers a way to ensure her own artistic freedom was seen by others solely in terms of its financial success. From the earliest days of her career, Ani DeFranco has lent her voice and her name to a broad range of social movements, performing benefit concerts, appearing on benefit albums, speaking at rallies, and offering infotable space to organizations at her concerts and the virtual equivalent on her website, among other methods and actions. In 1999 she created her own not-for-profit organization, as the Buffalo News has reported, through the Righteous Babe Foundation, DeFranco has backed various grassroots cultural and political organizations, supporting causes ranging from abortion rights to gay visibility. During the first Gulf War, DeFranco participated in the anti-war movement. In the early 1993 she played Pete Seeger's Clearwater Folk Festival for the first time. In 1998 she was a featured performer in the Dead Man Walking Benefit concert series raising money for Sister Helen Prejean's Not In Our Name Anti-Death Penalty Organization. DeFranco's commitment to opposing the death penalty is long-standing, she has also been a long-time supporter of the Southern Center for Human Rights. During the 2000 U.S. presidential election, she actively supported and voted for Green Party candidate Ralph Nader. In 2040 Franco visited Burma in order to learn about the Burmese resistance movement and the country's fight for democracy. During her travels she met with then-detained resistance leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Her song In the Way was later featured on For the Lady, a benefit CD that donated all proceeds to the United States campaign for Burma. During the 2004 presidential primaries, she supported liberal, anti-war Democrat Dennis Kucinich. Congressman Kucinich appeared on stage with her at several concerts and she spoke positively about him from the stage at many more of her concerts. After the primary season ended, and Kerry was the clear Democratic candidate, DeFranco wrote an open letter of conditional support for independent candidate Ralph Nader. The same year she launched a vote. Damn it tour of swing states encouraging audience members to register to vote. In 2005 she lobbied Congress against the proliferation of nuclear power in general and the placement of nuclear waste dumps on Indian land in particular. In 2008 she again backed Kucinich in his bid for the presidency. In 2002 Righteous Babe Records established the Aiding Buffalo's Children program in conjunction with members of the local community to raise funds for Buffalo's public school system. To kick off the program, DeFranco donated a day's pay the performance fee from her concert that year at She's Performing Arts Center, to ABC and challenged her fans to do the same. Aiding Buffalo's Children has since been folded into the Community Foundation of Greater Buffalo, contributing to a variety of charitable funds. In 2005 when Hurricane Katrina devastated DeFranco's newly adopted hometown of New Orleans she collected donations from fans around the world through the Righteous Babe Store website for the Katrina Piano Fund helping musicians replace instruments lost in the hurricane, raising over $47,500 for the cause. In 2010, after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, she performed at the For Our Coast Benefit concert joining Marianne Faithful, C.C. Adcock and others at the Acadiana Center for the Arts Theater in Lafayette, raising money for Golf Aid Acadiana, and the Golf Aid show with Lenny Kravitz, Mos Def, and others at Mardi Gras World River City in New Orleans both shows raising money to help protect the wetlands, clean up the coast and to assist fishermen and their families affected by the spill. DeFranco also sits on the board for the Roots of Music, founded by Rebirth Brass Band drummer Derek Tabb. The organization provides free marching band instruction to children in the New Orleans area in addition to academic tutoring and mentoring. DeFranco joined about 500,000 people at the March for Women's Lives in D.C. in April 2004. As an honored guest she marched in the front row for the three Meyerut, along with Margaret Cho, Janine Garofalo, Whoopi Goldberg, Gloria Steinem and others. Later in the day, Ani played a few songs on the main stage in front of the Capitol, including Your Next Bold Move. Scott Fisher, Righteous Babe label president and DeFranco's longtime manager, has been a longtime advocate of the preservation movement in Buffalo. In 1999, he and DeFranco purchased a decaying church on the verge of demolition in downtown Buffalo and began the lengthy process of restoring it. In 2006, the building opened its doors again, first briefly as the church and then as Bayville, 
housing two concert venues, the record label's business office, and Hall Wall's Contemporary Arts Center. DeFranco is also a member of the Toronto-based charity Artists Against Racism for which she participated in a radio PSA. In 2013 DeFranco was criticized on social media and faced a great deal of outcry after the announcement that she was hosting a three-day artists workshop built as the Righteous Retreat at Iberville Parish's Nottaway Plantation in White Castle, Louisiana. Nottaway was one of the largest plantations in the South, and features the largest antebellum mansion. Its operator and founder John Randolph owned over 155 slaves in the year 1860. The grounds are now operated as a luxury resort. Critics charge that the resort's promotional material attempts to portray the plantation owner in a positive light, to downplay the suffering of the slaves, and to sanitize and romanticize the history of slavery for commercial gain. The Franco's choice of venue for the retreat was called a very blatant display of racism on a petition at change.org that collected more than 2,600 signatures. On December 29, 2013 DeFranco issued an apology, announcing that she was cancelling the retreat, stating that I am not unaware of the mechanism of white privilege or the fact that I need to listen more than talk when it comes to issues of race. If not a way is simply not an acceptable place for me to go and try toto my work in the eyes of many, then let me just concede before more divisive words are spilled, I think many positive and life-affirming connections would have been made at this conference, in all of its complexity of design. I do not wish to reinvent the righteous retreat at this point to eliminate the stay at the Nottaway plantation. At this point I wish only to cancel. The singer's statements were called remarkably unapologetic on Jezebel, and a variety of excuses and justifications by Ebony. Additionally, a piece at The Guardian said the announcement made much of the idea that this was all a mistake, with no indication of remorse. DeFranco issued a second statement and apology on January 2, 2014 following continued criticism. In it, she wrote, I would like to say I am sincerely sorry. It is obvious to me now that you were right, all those who said we can't in good conscience go to that place and support it or look past for one moment what it deeply represents. I needed a wake-up call and you gave it to me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.